few weeks ago, I did a very silly thing, I have to confess. Um, as a business owner, it's a ridiculous thing to do. And the worst thing is, I've done it before. So I should know, I should know better. Uh, and I'd like to be able to say, I'm not going to do it again. But you know, you know what things are like. And I suspect it might be something that you've done as well. I'm setting up this new website, which is all to do with training in presentation skills and public speaking, because it's one of the things I really want to focus on. That's not the silly thing. That was quite sensible, I thought. But having decided to do that, I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to have a look on the internet and see how many other people offer presentation skills <laughs> training? So, into Google, I put presentation skills training UK and pressed the search button. Now, if you've done that before, you will know that Google comes up with a results page and at the top of that results page, there's a number which is how many results Google has found. That means how many pages has Google found which are relevant to that search term that you just put in. I want to have a guess how many pages it found that were relevant to presentation skills training UK? Oh, 22,000. Rough guess. <laughs> oh, I wish. I wish. It said about 10,400,000. <laughs> Yes, Pages. results, results. Oh, about about 10,400,000 results. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm interested in that word about. <laughs> because to me, what that says is that Google gave up counting at that point. It just went, oh, there's millions on. Oh, I can't be bothered with this. Just put loads. So, it wasn't the greatest thing to do because 10 seconds before I hit the search button, I was actually feeling quite energetic and enthusiastic about this whole new project. In fact, my energy and enthusiasm, I would say, was sky high at that point. Uh, here's a visual representation of what happened to my energy and enthusiasm uh, 10 seconds after I hit that <laughs> button. And you all know that you know, when you're working either by yourself or in a very small business, your motivation, your energy, your enthusiasm is pretty important, isn't it, to keep you going? Especially, as you like me, you work by yourself and you work from home and you're sitting in front of a computer and within the space of 20 seconds, your energy, enthusiasm and motivation goes from up there somewhere to sinking down through the floor. It's never a great thing to remind yourself how much competition there is out there with some very few examples, uh, exceptions I should say, um, most of us, if we're honest, whatever service we offer people, we know there are thousands of other people out there offering what to our clients looks like just the same thing, with a few exceptions. Um, motivational hypnotherapists you don't come across very often, I'll give you that, but most people, whatever we do, there's lots of other people out there doing the same thing. One tip, don't go looking for them. It's depressing to find out <coughs> that there are lots of other people doing the same thing. And you might think, oh yes, but I'm different. The way I run my business, the way I deliver my service, the way I work with my clients, my personality, my approach, everything makes me different from everybody else. That may well be true. but. How do you make that apparent when a client just looks out at the marketplace and all they can see is a mass of faces in effect that all look exactly the same and all bouncing up and down saying, pick me, pick me. How do you get potential clients to see that you're the one that they should actually come and talk to? One of the most powerful and in some ways the simplest way that I've found to do that is through writing. Writing can bring huge benefits to your business. It can help you to stand out from your competition, to differentiate yourself. It can help to show your expertise, to set you up as an authority. It can attract clients. It can build relationships with clients, all sorts of things. So one of the simplest ways for clients to differentiate between people, if they're just searching on the web and looking through different websites, they find somebody who's written something. There's a report, there's articles, there's a blog. They've said something, 
here's something a client can latch onto and read about. Find out more about that business. Find out about the personality of the person who runs that business. See whether that person seems to know what they're talking about. You compare two websites, the one person who's written some stuff about what they know and somebody who hasn't got anything on that website, and I think most clients are generally going to gravitate towards the one that's got more information on it. What I want to look at this evening is, is one thing, just think about one thing that you could write, which is what I would call a call report. And a call report is the one thing which really sums up the essence of what you do and how you help people what people would get from working with you, for instance. I think of it a bit like, um, if you watch anything to do with chefs and cooking, chefs tend to have a signature dish. Scallops seem to feature quite a lot if you watch it. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it's scallops again. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, scallops too. Oh, yeah. Fresh scallops. Still, still repeating. <laughs> Whether it's scallops or not. Um, chefs have what they call a signature dish. <clears throat> it makes them stand out. That's what they do. Look, have a look at this. The core report, in a sense, is your signature dish. It's where somebody looks at that, and that report will tell me exactly what this person does. It explains their business, tells me what I can get from working with them, and it shows me a bit about their personality as well. I have a conversation sometimes with certain people about their marketing, and they say, oh, it's just me. I'm a one-person business. Should I have a website or something that represents me like I'm a corporate, you know, try and be bigger? And I, my view is always, no. What's the point of pretending you're corporate? You can't compete with the corporates. If you're an individual running your own business, make that your strength. You're an individual. That's why people come to you, not somebody else. Because you have an individual style and approach. That's your personality. Put that into the business. Have as much personality as you can in everything that you write and say about your business. Don't try and hide behind some corporate cloak that makes you look like everybody else. What's the point of doing that? You're unique at being you, so make that a strength. And writing is one of the ways you can do that. Write in a conversational style, in a natural style, the way that you would talk to people so that your personality comes through. So this group were discussing that, saying you'd be an expert in your field even when you're not, you said. You are an expert in your field. Yeah. You know more than people out there. As they always say, you don't, to be an expert, you don't have to know more than everyone else in the world. You just have to know more than everyone else in the room. If you've written something, to the person who's reading that, you're an expert. They don't know as much as you do. And in fact, because the written word still has a great impact, I think, these days, people are still impressed by the written word and people who can write. It's like a double whammy. They think... Not only are you an expert in your field, you can write about it as well. You're a writer. It's brilliant. It's the same with people who can stand up and speak, because most people hate standing up and speaking. They automatically respect people who can do it, because they think, well, I couldn't do that. And it's the same as I say, often people say to me, well, I couldn't write. So you just put together a report which makes some sense, is interesting, has a bit of personality in it. People will be impressed by that. One of the things you'll find is the more you can add content to your website, of course, the easier it is for Google to find it. If you've just got your basic website with the usual pages, you hope that you've got some keywords that Google might pick up if somebody searches for them. But you start writing articles on subjects which are related to questions, for instance, that your clients might ask. And Google will pick those up. One of the tips I would say is if you write a report or any article, I said, you know, how to is a great thing. Anyway, you know, how to do such and such, very practical thing. Everybody likes how to lists. Well, I had an article on one website, I had a management training one, it was about how to deal with angry people. And I found, I haven't really planned it like that, but how to deal with angry people was a fairly common search term when I looked. And when I looked at my figures on Google Analytics at one time, just having a look at, we're talking about you know, what figures will show you, it, actually quite a lot of people who landed on my website landed on that page for the article because they were searching how to deal with angry people. And because that particular, if, and I tried it then, I Googled it, I put how to deal with angry people. My article came up on the first page of Google, not just UK, but the first page of Google. 
Oh, we're on. My article. Yes, wow. I was quite pleased with that. Um, <coughs> I should have done, shouldn't I? A screenshot. Um, because, of course, the name of the article was exactly the same as the question that people had put in. So if you know the sort of questions that your clients will ask, the client would say, oh, how do you do such and such? Write an article or a report that says how to do that. What you're, you're writing for your client. You're not writing a brochure that says, this is what we do. And uh, I would say this about your websites as well, to be honest. You, the usual brochure thing, this is what we do, we've been in business this long, this is where we're... Nobody cares about any of that, frankly. No, one, no one's interested in that. They're interested in what you can do to help them. So what you do is give away some of your knowledge, your information. This is how we help people. How can, how can you do something that you want to do, your client? What is it that you do that helps people? And you're not giving away the whole shop, you know, you can't give away all your knowledge, it would be impossible to do that. And even if you did give away loads and loads of information, information is no use to most of your clients. They need you to help them put it into practice. You can give them as many tips as you like, they're not going to put it all into practice. But what it will do is show them that you know what you're talking about. And the chances are that then somebody will read it and they will ring you up and say, I was reading all these tips, brilliant. Can you come and help me actually do that? Networking. One of the things people tend to find difficult about networking, I don't know if you find this, is the whole follow-up thing. You go to a networking meeting, you talk to somebody that seems a bit in interested in what you do, once you get around to actually talking about that. But what do you do next? And I've talked to so many business owners who, that, that, and I've been to networking meetings myself, I know this happens, they either don't follow up at all, because they can't think what to say. So they meet somebody and then they, nothing happens afterwards, even though that person was quite interested. They just they find it awkward to follow <coughs> up. Or they follow up by sending them their entire sort of sales brochure. And I've done that. I've been at networking meetings, met somebody, said, oh, you know, give me a car, give me a car. I go home. By the time I get home, their entire sales brochure is coming through <laughs> on the internet. So, Hang on, I'm not ready for this. We had a five minute conversation and I said, uh, you showed a vague interest. We established eye contact very briefly across the room. So I'm going to send you all this stuff about what we do. I don't, I don't care. I don't want any of that. It's not helpful to me. But you have some articles, again, a core report on something that clients typically would ask you about. You meet somebody at a networking event they start to talk to you, you've got some information you can follow up easily. You're not sending them any sales stuff. If they ask you a question, you can just say, actually, I've got an article about that. Or I've got a report, actually, that I've, I've written for clients, completely free, uh, and there's a little section on that. it would probably be of interest to you. I'll just pop it in the post to you, or I'll drop it in an email to you afterwards. You're not pushing them, you're not harassing them, you're not trying to sell them anything at that point. You're starting to build a relationship with them. All your marketing is about building relationships, isn't it? All your marketing is about getting people from this point to this point. This point here is, I've never heard of you, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you do. And that point there is, let me give you some money. <laughs> but there are a number of stages in between. The problem with some people with their marketing, particularly at networking events, is they try and go through all the stages at once. They try to get you from never heard of you to give me some money in a desperate sort of way. And we all know actually it's a number of steps, isn't it? What the writing can do is to help you take people along some of those steps. From never heard of you to, oh, now I've heard of you and I know what you do. Now I know what you do and actually you've written some quite interesting stuff here which I found quite useful. Now we're starting to have a bit of a relationship. Now, if I do think I need this service, I'm much more likely to come and talk to you than somebody else who I met who hasn't got any written material, didn't follow up with me, or sent me all their sales brochures. So it makes the follow-up and the networking so much easier. If you have a website, presumably you want people to visit that website. Now, I know businesses differ. Not everyone gets a lot of business through websites. But if you have a website, you presumably want people to go and look at it, otherwise it's not by having the website at all. If people go and look at it, how do you know they've been there? You only know, and you only make any connection with them, if you can get them to leave their email address and their name in some way. Most websites still don't do that. 
Now, I have to say, I took the liberty of looking at everybody's websites before coming along tonight. Based on the email that Debbie sent out, I went and had a look at everybody's websites. I'm not going to name any names. But I looked at 11 websites. Two of them had a sign-up box to ask people to leave their name and email address. Two out of the 11. Of those two, none of them offered anything to get people to sign up, except something that said, sign up for my newsletter and other great information, one of them said. <laughs> other great free stuff. Yes, other great free stuff. <laughs> sign up and get some stuff. I won't tell you what it is, but you'll get some stuff. <laughs> Whether they actually do any get, get any stuff, I don't know. But, but anyway, without picking on Debbie too much. No, so she, oh, OK. But uh, again, that's typical. But you'll find these days, if people visit your website, they need to be persuaded to give you their email address. People are a lot cannier now than they were you know, 10 years ago when you, you'd be able to do that and say, oh, get my newsletter. And people go, oh, yeah, fine. People don't like giving their email address and their name well, the unless they're going to get something. They're going to send you something every bloody month. Or every yeah, week. they don't know what they're going to get. Well, even if you say you're going to get my newsletter, well, what's in it? Why is there nothing on the website that shows me what's in your newsletter? Well, and that may be during your case, but in some, and what, some websites, a lot of them I've seen, it just says that. Sign up for our newsletter. Why? Why would I? I have no idea what's in it. Why, why would I give you my personal information? They want something immediate that they can download, and that's where your core report comes in. You need to get people's email addresses. I've built up mailing lists. I've got two mailing lists. They've both got about 12 to 1,500 people on them. I've built them up over years. Now, that's not to say that all those people are active. If I send out a newsletter, probably 10% regularly open the newsletter. But at least it means I've got a database of some sort. I've got contacts of people who otherwise would have just passed straight through. They'd have looked at the website, moved on, I'd have no idea they were there. And that's all through offering a report on the website. The other key thing I would say about writing of any sort, done is better than perfect. Being a perfectionist, I've learned this, being a perfectionist is not a good trait when you're a writer. The people I know, when I said to people, oh, I've got a book, oh, I wish, I've always wanted to write a book, it's always been on my wish. Write it, sit down and write it. The number of people who say, oh, yeah, but I started a book, and I, I'm not looking at you again, but <laughs> <laughs> I started a book, but for some reason I just can't, get it done. <laughs> it's no use still on your computer, half finished. Get it written, get it out there, see what the response is. If people don't like it, write something different. If people pick holes in it, change it, but they won't. Just get it done, get it written, use it. Overall, as a summary, I would say, when it comes to marketing, we're all looking for one of these. <laughs> we're all looking for the magic wand that you can just go, here's some more business. There's got to be something where we could just produce clients from nowhere. But like you, I don't have one of these. Well, clearly I do. Um, I've got this one. You lie about other things as well. I've got this one. But it doesn't work. So. They tell me that now. And I paid nearly a pound for that. Um, it doesn't work. But the nearest I've found to one of those is writing. And I've used writing, I say, all the years I've been in business. All the years I've been in business. And I find that I get most of my business through writing. And the great thing is about it. I do not get involved in tenders. The people who contact me to work with them, and that's how it works, they contact me to work with them, they've already pretty much decided they want me to work with them. I usually have fairly short conversations with potential clients because they know already, they've read my stuff, they've looked at the website, they've read the blog, they've read some articles, they've found me in some way, and they've got to know me. Yeah, I'm not a risk anymore. They know my approach. They know what I think. They know the sort of stuff I do. They've decided they like that. So that whole risk thing has disappeared. So basically, they're on the phone then saying, you know, when can you come and do this? Because we've already decided. It's very rare that I go and talk to somebody and they say, oh, we're looking at lots of other providers as well. Sometimes they do. But even so, that 
it's not usually, as I say, a competitive tender. Usually, they've already pretty much decided I'm someone they can work with. So what I would say is, again, just to sum the whole thing up, write something. It will set you apart from all the competition. It will make you different. It will show people what you're about. It will get your personality over to them. It will help you get over that thing where clients look out and just everyone looks the same. How can I choose one from the other? And going right back to what I said at the beginning, if a client looks at two websites and one person has got some free material, some articles, blogs, free report that they can read about and get to know that person more, and the other website there's nothing except the basic web information, they're going to pick the person that's got the free information, the person who's giving them more 